Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning as we <laughs> celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. A special welcome to our visitors. If you're new in the Springfield, Clark County area, or looking for a new church home, we invite you to make St. John your new church home. The service today is entirely printed in your bulletin except for the hymns, so you will only need the red hymn book for the singing of the hymns. Everything else, uh, just follow your bulletin. So I ask that you turn to page two in your bulletin to the order of confession and forgiveness, and I invite those who can without difficulty to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are tempted to sin and cannot repress ourselves. We have sinned against you in all word and deed, by our own we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved your neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter. We This is May the 18th, 2014. Our opening hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth. It is written by Phil Yacht Pierpont, who is a teacher in Bath, England. And he was inspired by the beauty of the earth. This is one of the few hymns that's devoted 100% to Thanksgiving. The whole theme is Thanksgiving for the beauty of the earth, written by Phil Yacht Pierpont, Bath, England. We welcome you to join us every Sunday. Our last Sunday will be June the 1st.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For you, then, who believe he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not, once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
city as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord. Uh, all the other announcements, I think, are pretty well self-explanatory as they appear in the book. Choir is giving special music now, directed by Vicki Perks.
And that is what we picked up today in that 14th chapter of God, John, the final, some of the final teachings of Jesus before he's betrayed, before he's crucified, and before he rises from the dead. And as he was speaking in that upper room to the disciples and speaking to us today as 21st century Christians, he says these words, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now Jesus not only states this, but he seals those words with his blood upon the cross. He seals those words with his resurrection. He seals those words with his ascension. Now why is it important that Christ lives? Because Christ lives, you have the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Now since our first parents got kicked out of paradise, societies have tried to figure out the way to get back into paradise. How to establish a relationship with God. How to guarantee eternal life. And as I've told you many times before, when you study history of civilization, you see that every civilization came up with some kind of religion. And they came up with some kind of view of God. They came up with some kind of idea about God. Of course, they were wrong. They had God being the sun, God being the moon, God being a volcano. It is, I don't know if it still exists, but there was a tribe out in the Pacific Ocean who believed the shark was God. And every year we have sacrifices to the shark. And so God had to come along and reveal who he truly was. But they all were trying to find a way. And the religions of the world today, they are trying to show you a way to God. Or to Allah. Or to whatever they believe in. But it's the same thing. They all have a way that involves doing a lot of rules and rituals and regulations, all kinds of works, righteousness, and heaven forbid if you miss out on just one little bitty law or rule or tradition or sacrifice or whatever. Jesus comes and he tells us, I can do it. He doesn't say, I am one of the ways, like there are those today, and you find it especially popular on college campuses, that want to say, oh, in reality, all religions of the world are all paths or all ways to the same place. That's not what Jesus says. Jesus says, I am the way. Now, the Greek word translated way, one meaning is the road to travel. So Jesus is telling us he is the road to travel. He is the road that takes us directly to God the Father. That He is the road that takes us directly to eternal life so that we may spend eternity with all those who go before us in the faith. That He is the road that takes us to that paradise we wish for. When this country was being founded by the Europeans, our ancestors, for the most of us, that they came to America and then there would be those who got like Daniel Boone, who got tired of living in one place, so he blazed a trail to someplace else. He went from Virginia to Kentucky and eventually all the way out to Missouri. And so these trailblazers would go up in front of us and they would make the way so that wagon trains could follow after them and new parts of the nation could be opened up to settle. Well, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the Apostle tells us that as we continue our race of life, we are to look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That word that so often is translated author literally means trailblazer. Jesus is the trailblazer of our faith. He is the one that cut out the road. We talk about the National Road, Kentucky Road, you've got the Wilderness Road. You know, somebody cut that out so that people could travel. But well, Jesus cut the way to God. Jesus made the way, the road to travel, an easy road to travel. He did not pile on a bunch of rules and regulations on us, but instead gave us grace so that the road would be easy. So Jesus is the road to the heavenly Father. The word also means manner of life. I am the manner of life you are to live, Jesus is saying. Jesus shows us how to live. How does he tell us how to live? To love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. But then we go back to the 
upper room. And in the 13th chapter of John, which we always read on Monday, Thursday, the Thursday of Holy Week, Jesus gives us, those who believe in him, a new commandment. And that new commandment is that we love one another as he loved us. We still love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. We still love our neighbor as ourselves. But each other is a community of faith. We love as Christ loved us. And how did Christ love us? Loving us so much that he sacrificed himself for us. So we are to have that same kind of love that we love each other. We're willing to sacrifice for one another for the good of Jesus Christ. Not the good of ourselves. Not to bring us some kind of recognition or make ourselves some kind of hero. But to do it for the good of Jesus Christ. So Jesus gives us the way, the manner of life we are to live. And then there's a third reading to this word. It's the one I like the most. But before I tell you what it is, it can explain to you. Suppose you are traveling somewhere and you get lost. I'm sure it never happens. Nobody ever travels get lost, do you? Some of us, we get lost, we just keep going, but eventually we find out the place. Some of you will stop and ask somebody for direction. Now suppose you stop and you see somebody and you ask them for directions and they hear the direction. Well, the place you want to go, stay on this road and go down to the 8th Street and turn right. Once you're on that street, go down to the 5th Street and turn left. Then you go on that street till you come to the 7th Street and you turn right. And then once you turn right, you immediately turn left. And you go down that street for another way till you come to the ninth street and turn right again, and then you'll find what you're looking for. Well, growing up like I did, where directions were by landmarks, I'm lost after the second right or first left or whatever it is, street, fourth street, whatever I'm supposed to go down. You know, when I was growing up, it was you go down till you see a bar that says Mel Pouch Tobacco, and then you turn left right there. And you keep going until you come to a big pond you'll see. There'll be a bunch of cattle around. You turn right there. And then you go on down until you see this big iron gate that says such and such horse farm. And then you turn there, keep on that road, and you'll find where you want to go. Well, we go by the directions the guy gave us. 8th Street, turn right. 5th Street, turn left. 4th Street, turn right, left, right. We get confused. We're lost again. But what if that person says, Tell you what, let me get in my car or hop on my motorcycle or hop on my bicycle and you follow me and I will take you there. Or suppose you're walking and you're lost. And instead of the person giving you a bunch of directions, you said, here, let me take you by the hand and I will lead you. That is the third meaning of this word way. When Jesus says, I am the way, he is saying, I am the one who takes you by the hand to the Father. I don't give you a bunch of directions like Muhammad or Moses or Buddha or Confucius. I take you by the hand and I lead you to my heavenly Father. I will lead you to paradise. I will lead you to eternal life. So that is what happens because Christ lives. And Christ, not risen on that third day, as prophesied, then we wouldn't have a way. We'd be lost just like all those people who don't believe in Jesus. We wouldn't be any closer to a right relationship with God. We wouldn't be any closer to an assurance of eternity, of everlasting life in the kingdom of God. Because Jesus is the way. We have that. It's not subjective. It's objective. Jesus is the way. He's the road. He's the man of life. He takes us by the hand and leads us there. Because Christ lives in you have the truth. Now again, ever since the beginning of time, people have tried to figure out truth. Remember when Jesus was before Pilate, Pilate asked him, what is truth? The Romans had all kinds of ideas what truth was. The Greeks had all kinds of ideas what truth was. They'd go to any bookstore and you can see philosopher after philosopher telling you what the truth is. Jesus says, I am the truth. The word literally means I am the reality, I am the fact. That's what the word truth means as it's translated here. I am the fact, I am the reality. Oh, others may try to tell you they're the fact. Others may try to tell you they're the reality, but I am the truth. I am the one that 
shows you what God is really like. You look at the religion of the world and you see God more often than not as portrayed as a God of wrath. A God who is very hard to please. A God who is just sitting back waiting to zap you for the slightest offense you make. And so people fear God. Tremble before the idea of God. We had, when I was in serving a parish in Kentucky, we had a couple who had been in the Army Corps of Engineers. And then after 25 years or so, he resigned his commission and then rejoined the Army Corps of Engineers as a civilian. He got sent to Saudi Arabia, he and his wife. You know, Saudi Arabia, that ally of ours that doesn't allow anybody to be a Christian. You know, if you convert somebody, you get executed. If a person becomes a Christian, they get beheaded or stolen or whatever. You know, those people are supposed to be our good buddies. The ones always raise the price of all of us. We well, was working there on some kind of project. And he was trying to instill in the workers the importance of safety. You wear a hard hat when you're on the job. You give me enough a pole, you wear a safety belt. They wouldn't do it. When you're speeding out in the desert in your fancy car or truck, you put a seatbelt on. They wouldn't hear it. Because their attitude was, if they're working on that project and a wrench falls down from above them and it hits them in the head and kills them, that's Allah's will. If they're shimmying up that pole and they fall to their death, that's Allah's will. If they're driving in the desert like an idiot and the car flips over and it crashes and they're killed, but if they'd won their seat belt, they would have survived. Well, that's all I was with. That's not the kind of God I want to serve. A God who tells us He didn't give us intelligence so we could figure out safety issues on our jobs, that we could make life safer by doing certain things, improving certain things. So see, Jesus is the truth because he reveals to us what God really is. He's not this God of wrath just waiting to zap us when we step out of line. He's a God of love. Who loved us so much he sent his only son into the world that the world might be saved through him. That he sent his son into the world not to condemn the world. But that the world would find salvation in him. So Jesus is the fact, the reality. As he said in our gospel lesson to Philip, when you've seen me, you have seen the Father. And what did we see in Jesus? We saw a person filled with compassion, who healed the leper, who healed uh, the blind, the lame, the, the deaf, who raised the dead, who fed those who were hungry. We see Jesus who goes to the cross on our behalf. He is the truth, the fact, the reality. Because Christ lives, you have that truth. And because Christ lives, you have a life. Here the word life means eternal life. Again, go to a bookstore. See how many authors there are trying to tell you how to live life, what life's all about. Oh, you've got to do this, and you've got to fulfill this, and you've got to do that, chase this, chase that. Real life is in Jesus Christ. He teaches us that there's no greater love than to serve one another. Tells us that eternal life comes not by us doing a bunch of works, keeping a bunch of traditions and rules and rituals. That eternal life is gained by believing in Him and believing in the grace that God gives us through Him. And He says that we can't go to the Father except through Him, and that word through means to be the avenue to get somewhere. It means to be the route to get somewhere, the route to get somewhere. It's the channel that you go through in order to arrive at your destination. Or it means to go through someone in order to arrive at your destination. Going back to that idea that Jesus takes our hand and leads us into the presence of his heavenly Father. So because Christ lives, because Christ lives, you have the way, you have the truth, and you have eternal life. And without him, you have nothing. And so it's not subjective. It's not what I think Jesus said. 
It is object what Jesus proclaimed. And not only did he proclaim it, he was willing to seal it with his blood upon the cross. That is why 2014, the resurrection of Jesus is still as important as it was in the first century AD. Because it gives to us the way, the truth, and the life. It gives us that way to the Father for all eternity. Because Christ lives, we shall be lost. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us now sing, Bless me the time that binds, hymn number 656. In the back of your worship. Hymn number 656. This is hymn number uh, 656, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, which was written by John Fawcett, he lived in the 1700s. The music was also from the 1700s at St. John's Lutheran <coughs> Church, the fifth Sunday of Easter. This is May the 18th, 2014.
rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs. Our response today is, your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. We praise you for the raising of your son from death. We praise you for the opening of the door of your mansion for all who believe. We give thanks that you made your people a royal priesthood. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in authority, O oh Lord. For we know that the true authority comes from you. Grant to the leaders of every nation a desire to seek your will in all things. Open their hearts to receive your word. Give them the wisdom in decision making. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek help and whom it's easy to neglect. Orphans, widows, and widowers, foster children, those who are abused, the homeless, the hungry. And those ripped with chains of addiction. Grant the help, healing, and the remembrance of the value in your eyes. Provide the church and social services the resources needed to care for all in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We hold before you all who are sick and injured. Bring healing to those who have recently had surgery and undergoing physical therapy. Sustain the hope of those who are longing for healing for the life-threatening diseases. We especially hold before you those who most dear to us and those who serve as caregivers. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who are graduating high schools, colleges, universities, and other places of learning. Grant that they may use what they have learned for the well-being of their neighbors. Be present with those who are enlisted in military service and those who are currently serving their country. <laughs> Guide congregations and candidates for ordained ministry to their call processes. May those who are seeking employment find meaningful work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As your son prepared to place for those who believe, comfort the families of those who now reside in your heavenly mansion. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> it's now time for our offering. Harvey Baker has assisted the pastor in leading the Nicene Creed and also the prayers of intercession. Now the <coughs> ushers are coming forward to receive the offering. This is St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. You can, if you desire any information on our church, call 323-7508, or you can go 937-323-7508. You are watching a video of our 1030 service. The service took place on May the 18th, 2014. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter. We're glad to have you join us, worship, worshiping with us any Sunday or watching us on our video. You can watch us on our website. You can watch us on cable until June the 1st. Then we will be going to our website.
and merciful, you bring forth the food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your, you care, your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. St. John practices an open communion for all those who are baptized and believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We believe his body and blood are truly present as we gather this table. In our community age and our own individual congregation, we are invited and encouraged to come forward with us this day as we gather at the table. I ask that you please turn to page 7 in your bulletin as we continue our celebration of the great things. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to be our best and It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Pastor Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. So with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join them in any name. Members of the congregation are now singing the song to us. Holy, 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 we believe that the powers and the people who have gone before us are there at the altar with us, the saints, the angels, and the one who has died is there with us taking communion with the scientists.
holy time in the Lutheran Church. You can look at the expressions on the people's faces and they have received the real presence of Jesus within them who lives within them, the true body and the true blood. We believe in this and you can tell it by the reverence that the people have on their faces, the joy that they have received this. And this is a very joyful and prayerful time. is the traditional Welsh melody. We thank you for watching our broadcast. Watch us again either on cable, depending on when you see this broadcast, or watch us on our website. Thank you for watching today. We're at St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Our number is 323-7508, area code 937. We thank you and we pray for you this week, and we ask you to pray for our ministry. Thank you.